Hey, what's going on? Welcome to Simple Man Comics. We got a great little panel discussion here. We're going to recap our time at Baltimore Comic Con. I have with me my co-host on the channel, Jack DeMeo, a.k.a. Mr. Bolo. But we also have two special guests, Patreon supporters, Andy and Parker. You might know Andy also from his own YouTube channel, Comic Man Andy. And Parker, you might recognize if you watch any of these premieres, he's the one that's always doing super chats. But we had a hell of a time at Baltimore, and we're going to recap that experience right now, and I'm going to bring the rest of the panel in, and we're going to have a nice little discussion about Baltimore Comic Con. panel we have with us up in the top left right now we have andy or as known comic man andy who's enjoying his little kool-aid what's up down guys the, down on the bottom right we have cantankerous who's also known as parker what's going on parker oh hey everybody from california it's nice and hot here 95 degrees and then of course the man that needs no introduction on this channel co-host Man of the Hour, a.k.a. Mr. Bolo. We also know him as Jack DeMeo. It's... What's going on, everybody? And I'm bad at pointing at directions, trying to point where people are. But So we guys ready to talk about Baltimore Comic Con, right? Yes. So yes. Good we times. got, in case you guys know Parker's from good old Los Angeles. We got Andy, he's from Michigan, and then if you don't know, Jack is from South Carolina. And then me, I'm from Southern Maryland, so Baltimore is just about an hour and a half drive. But that's why I wanted to have this panel on here, because we got people from all over. We all convened at Baltimore Comic Con, and we're here to tell our story about it. So we're going to just go through a little couple questions, do a little recap. Um, first thing is, I'll start with you, Andy, then go around the same question is, how does Baltimore Comic Con compare to other comic cons that you've attended previously. Well, this one's a tough for me. This one's a tough one for me, guys, because uh, Baltimore is really only the third big convention I've ever been to. I've been to some smaller conventions that are borderline flea market kind of deals. Um, Baltimore, it's the biggest con I've ever been to. It's the busiest con I've ever been to. Um, but it's been the best run con that I've ever been to. So I can't, I can't really, I don't have a lot of experience and a lot of history to compare to, but um, Baltimore was uh, run a lot better than the, the last couple of cons that I've been to. Right. And then uh, Parker, you, you from LA, you get some big cons out there. In fact, you did back to back, right? You were at another con the week before. Yeah. The week before I went to LA Comic Con and I posted some pictures of the lines on Saturday literally like a mile long line just to get in. Obviously, um, I've done a few other cons before around this area. There's the WonderCon. There's one way out there in Inland Empire. I think they, yeah, there's another con, I forget the name of it. Con Con Revolution, I think is what it's called. And I think uh, Sean goes to that one too. And obviously the big one, LA Comic Con that I went to. Um, Baltimore is like right between Comic Con Re Revolution and LA Comic Con. WonderCon is about the same size as LA Com um, Comic Con, but it, the setting is a little smaller, but it's better for me because you could actually stop by at every vendor and spend a whole day instead of trying to rush through everything like LA Comic Con or WonderCon because there's tons of people over there. So it was nice. And the artist, I can't believe the, how short the lines were for the artist. Like to get a signature in those big Comic Cons, you'd have to literally wait half the day just to get a signature. So I think that's a big plus, <clears throat> especially on Friday, I guess. So uh, yeah, I, might, I probably 
Yeah, I'm definitely gonna go with this too. Again. Yeah. So Jack, you I mean, we all know you go to a bunch of Comic Cons. Not only do you go to them, but you've sold at Comic Cons before. Kind of give us your experience between Baltimore and then compare it to other cons that you've attended in the past. Well, yeah, I, I attend a lot of conventions on the southeast uh, coast. Um, and like you mentioned, um, I, I attend as a buyer. I attend as a representative of comicbookinvest.com and CBSI as a media guest. Um, and I attend also as a vendor. Um, and I've kind of done all three roles. So I've gotten a chance to see cons of various sizes, be it South Carolina Comic Con, North Carolina Comic Con, and the biggest usually Heroes Con in Charlotte, North Carolina. And uh, Baltimore Comic Con always has a big booth at Heroes Con. So they've always done a lot of advertising. Uh, and it's always been something where I've said, man, I got to go to that convention. Also, a lot of the CBSI guys have loved and, and talked so fondly of Baltimore Comic Con. And Brian, you being my partner in crime here on Simple Men's Comics YouTube channel, you've always talked about Baltimore Comic Con. So getting to see it for the first time, it kind of had a lot to live up to. But I got to say that it really kind of delivered on everything I would have hoped for. It was a, a great convention with a, a lot of like buying opportunity, a lot of vendors, a lot of things being sold. And similar to like Parker mentioned, tons of A-list um uh guests writers creators very accessible well laid out the actual convention center was a, a an amazing location a lot of space um it was a very comfortable environment and uh you know i went this year as a media guest i did a little bit of buying as well but i think in the future it's an, it's another convention where i may actually look to do and be a vendor as well because i think that the crowd was there for sure and i think the vendors were probably pretty happy with what they were able to do by the end of the weekend so i had a great time um and I, it uh, it was a convention that i feel like i could have been there for 10 days and found more stuff to do and more things to look at like i said this is kind of my local con it's about an hour and a half for me so I've been going probably about the past five years now. Um, this is my second time going as a media or press person. Um, I went with the intention. We had this whole game plan. We're going to get all this footage. But um, I will tell you the first thing that comes to mind. The good thing about Baltimore Comic Con is they have comics there. Not just, they have a lot of comics there. There's a lot of dealers with comics. You're starting to get that trend now where things are called Comic Con. You go to it. There's not many comics or dealers there. Baltimore, definitely the opposite of that. They have vendors upon vendors, bunch of dollar bin digging, bunch of wall books. So if you're looking for comics, Baltimore Comic Con's a good place to go, especially for the East Coast. Um, normally, Baltimore Comic Con is the week before New York Comic Con. This week, this year, it was the week after. I enjoyed that. It's normally in September. They moved it to October. I liked it a lot better in October. The only thing that I wish was a little bit different is it wasn't the same weekend as a Baltimore marathon. It kind of made getting in and out a little bit difficult, but there's nothing that's going to stop us from getting into that convention center. Next thing is, was there anything particularly you came to the con and were hunting or looking for, or was it just kind of to soak in the experience and do some digging and see what comes up? And I'll start again with you, Andy. Oh, gee, I wonder, guys. Uh, for the YouTube comic book community, the IG comic book family, and everybody out there that uh, has uh, helped me along, cheered me on, uh, rooted me on, reminded me to take it easy and continue on with my plan, that was my ASM 129 right here, 8.5 white pages, and uh, that was my goal. My goal was to go to Baltimore to hunt this book because I knew Baltimore was going to have great quality books and amazing dealers there and uh it being after new york this year i knew i was going to be able to work out a pretty good dealer with a um pretty good deal with uh with somebody there and sure enough i did i scored that book that was the whole reason for my trip that book and you guys the community the comic book community on youtube and instagram and we met a ton of great people and we had a ton of great memories Right, real quick, I will say that he has a separate piece of content on Comic Man Andy's YouTube channel about getting that book. So if you want to check that out, check out Comic Man Andy. We'll put a link to his to that specific video in the description of this video as well. But Parker, 
Were you there just yeah. to kind of soak it all in, or was there anything specific? You yeah, were well, I haven't been in East Coast, like, you know, for a long time, I think maybe 10, 20 years. So, like, yeah, it was kind of interesting to see how things are over there. Uh, but for sure, like, I noticed the price difference. Like, you get pretty much eBay prices on West Coast, but you can find some bargains on, like, I found so many books that I want to pull the trigger off, but I was like, ah, uh, maybe. Well, I think what it was like, you know, I was looking for mainly 9.8s and that condition was a factor, but the prices on like the low um, 9.6s even. So they were pretty good actually um, compared to what I found at LA Comic Con. Cause you'll pay like really crazy prices in LA Comic Con. You're probably paying more than eBay prices. So, you know, that aspect is probably going to make me go back there again to find some good ones. I didn't have a, I did not have a list of like books that I want to get. I was just looking for like, you know, books that were good priced decently. And I found a few, only spent like 60 bucks. But what I noticed was interesting. They had some original art there too. So I was like, ooh, that was some really good stuff. So next time I might bring a little bit more cash and maybe end up buying some of those original art because I don't think they had a booth in LA Comic Con with original art. Like I said, it's not like comic book oriented over there all the time. Um, they have a lot of celebrity stuff there. So if you're in it for comic books, I think Baltimore is the way to go. Yeah, I think you also have to have a different uh, attack plan because Andy came from Michigan, but he drove in a big old pick up truck. You were on a plane... So you're limited by what you can, I mean, unless you're strapping stuff to a, to a wing or something, hoping it gets there, you're kind of limited on how much you could buy or if you wanted to check another bag or so forth. But Oh, no, I actually thought about that. I was like, oh, yeah, I could just like mail the box to myself from there and, you know, yeah. just ship it really good. Jack, what about you? Well, yeah, you know, the funny thing is, as far as like things that we were looking for, um, it's kind of becomes overwhelming, especially as like a media guest, because right, we're, we're trying to do media things, right? So we're trying to cover the convention. At the same point, um, we had members of our Patreon there. So we wanted to be accessible and, you know, have a good time with them. Um, also, it was a networking opportunity. So for us, we got to spend time with the publishers um, and work on kind of some future projects and things like that. Um, but I was just like hoping to get to do some digging in between everything. So I didn't really have anything in mind. Um, I was kind of like, you know, if I see something of value that I can't live without, um, I'll jump on it. But <laughs> having said that, I end up coming home with a stack. So <laughs> that's kind of how it, how it always goes. And uh, the most memorable thing was I saw a GI Joe variant with Brian. Everybody who watched the channel knows I'm a big GI Joe fan. My logo is designed based off of GI Joe. Uh, Brian and I are digging like as soon as we get there on Friday. I see a GI Joe variant. I'm like, I've never seen this one before. I put it back in the box. I do a little research on Saturday and I realize this thing is a ghost. Um, so I went back to my man Carl from Ion Comics' booth. I'm digging through the box, frantically trying to find it. And lucky enough, he still had it. And uh, I ended up grabbing that as well as several other books from, from Carl um, and was very excited to bring that book home. But, uh, you know, it's funny how you go there and you don't know what you're looking for, but you end up grabbing, grabbing a bunch of stuff. Yeah. So um, Jack and I had a plan um, about getting content for the, for the con. And as good as I thought our plan was, it kind of got blown out of the water um, on multiple occasions. Cause like he said, networking with other publishers, other talent, future content, that was great. But there was another YouTube comic community channel that was there that we talked to a lot of times and that's the comic core and they had their own booth there and they are, I mean, it's like a big old team and we talk to them all the time online. We talk to them. We're in their channel. We're in their shows. And this was the first time we got to meet them in person and found it spent a lot of time just being excited, talking to each one of those, talking about YouTube, talking about content, talking about how great the con was in general, talking about their booth setup. Um, so that kind of ate up some of the schedule. And then Sunday, my plan was to go back with Jack, get a lot more content, do some digging because Sunday is the day that I like to actually do the, do digging for books. And then right in the morning, I get a, a phone call that my son was sick and 
so I needed to go home before that. Nothing like super serious sick, but enough to where I needed to go home and help bail the wife out so that um, I could sleep on the bed, not on the couch that night, but enjoyed the con definitely. But the next thing we wanted to talk about is how is the how did you find the cons set up? I mean, they have a nice map for you, but did you think it was easy to get to where you wanted to go, find what you wanted to do? I mean, you, if you would need to go to RS Alley, if you were looking for a certain booth, if you're looking for a certain publisher, how did you think about the con set up as a whole? Andy, I'll start with you. Um, let's see. So I think they did an amazing job differentiating between like artist alley and the um the dealers and whatnot but uh one of the things that i did notice that was really challenging was i feel like all the booth numbers kind of were like set up and then they clipped them all and threw them in a pot and just kind of took all the numbers and jumbled up and threw them up in the air and where they landed were the booth numbers i didn't i i it, over over two and a half days i couldn't really find an order of where the booth numbers were like i found where they were don't get me wrong about that. That, that. It was easy to find out where people were. But the booth numbers, when you look at the map, weren't necessarily in any sort of an order. That was a bit challenging, um, especially on Saturday when it got really busy and really hectic. But um, overall, it, it was easy to navigate. Uh, what I really liked what they did about that is the aisles were wider. Those were the widest aisles and the widest intersections that I've seen um, at the – whole three conventions I've ever been to but there were there was breathing room there but the booth numbers were the hardest thing for me um but yeah it was still oh I, I it was time I I could find everybody I could see the people I wanted to see D it was easy to see see the banners for the dealers um and it was easy to see wall comics for the dealers that they had up and it was easy once you knew once you were in artist alley you knew it the, the thing was that pre-planning when I wanted to go to booth 2113, the Comic Core booth, when I got there, there wasn't really kind of like an order. I couldn't find aisle this and then cross aisle that or anything. But I yeah, like kind of You kind of had to um, look at a couple of booths and then kind of navigate to find the – once you got through a couple of booths, okay, okay I, got, I can see how the numbers are working right now rather than saying, hey, um, booth 000 – to the right and then booth whatever the highest booth number was to the left. Yeah, I'm used to booths in. going one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and, and all the way down and all the way, you know, just rate it, rate in one big kind of order. So I'm not sure what system they used, but I wasn't able to discern any kind of a system while I was there for the booth numbers. Right. What about you, Parker? I mean. So, like I said, I'm just going to, for comparison, like uh, LA Comic Con had rows. You had banners flying over each rose. So it was numbered 100 to 20, uh, 2,000. So each row. And they kind of like separated out people. Like the signing pe um, area was like, I think near the hundreds. And out Artist Alley was like, they were 2,000s or something like that. You kept everything separate. And in between, basically, you get your mix of, you know, different. And that I. Yeah, Unless ahead. Baltimore does it, and I don't, I didn't pay attention to it, but I think that would be one thing that would be beneficial is, you know, kind of when you walk in, have it to where, almost like the grocery store, <laughs> you know, yeah, so and so threw down, you know, something, or at least, but, um, once you kind of figured out, okay, here's how it's working, here's how the booths are, I was fine, uh, but what about you, Jack? Yeah, so um, I actually, I actually had a hard time navigating Artist Alley the first couple of days, but I honestly, I don't blame the Baltimore Comic Con um, promoters and folks. I think it was just me basing things on what I'm used to. So like at Heroes Con, which is the biggest comparable large scale convention, um, it, the, the floor ends up getting split into two. So you have all of your, um, you know, your dealers on say one side of the room and all of your um, Artist Alley stuff on the other. What Baltimore had was essentially a U shape. So you had a U of all your Artist Alley stuff. And then in the middle was your dealers. I honestly didn't really pick up on that until about midday, kind of like Sunday when I was really trying to put together content. But again, I put that more on me because Baltimore does a great job with like their staff at the door. Um, they have kind of intermittent stations where they've got uh, the programs. Um, their program is exceptionally well laid out. 
So I think that that's more my thing than it is theirs. But it's funny you guys kind of stole my thunder. One thing that um, – and I know the Baltimore Comic-Con folks, like I said, they're at Heroes Con every year. I see them. They have a booth set up where they do a lot of advertising. One thing that I think really works at Heroes Con is they have giant banners that hang from the ceiling that say row 1700, row 1800. Um, so they actually have that. So I'm used to that where – if you're kind of like lost in the like the haze of like a busy Saturday, you can just look up and go, okay, I'm, I need to go over two rows. Um, and I think that that works really, really well. So I think any big convention that's going to use a big convention center, um, I think that that tool works very well. So if I was going to say, I think the way it's laid out, I think it's fine. Like I said, I think I put that on me, not on them. Um, the one... I say improvement I would make would be to put up maybe some banners or something of that nature where you can kind of see where you're at and where you're going um, throughout it. Because I had to kind of get, kind of get my bearings a couple times to figure out where, where you are. Cause different dealers, sometimes dealers you can see on their booth, what the, what the number is. The only, that was the trouble that I would run into is if dealers covered up the number in their booth or if, um, yeah. in artist have- alley, yeah they'd have like their placard but it'd be covered up by the wall so you kind of had to like right you'd be kind of like staring at everyone's back wall trying to figure out you know to get your bearings of what row you're in um so that that would be the one thing i say that the event staff could probably improve upon um to make things a little uh a little smoother i think there's like another thing that factors into it because i also go to the ontario comic-con the comic-con revolution and they do it a little differently. They have little squares. So everyone's like in a little square table, in little squares. And they organize it that way. But I think what, you know, dictates how, like, the booths are set up, it's also the shape and the size of, you know, the actual area, I mean, the, uh, <clears throat> the place where you're going to have the con. Like, I noticed that Baltimore, they had, like, this rectangular area and then they had this like really narrow area that goes just down and there i think that's where the artist alley was some of them some of the people that were making crafts and you know yeah. the independents not like the major publishers was down that area so it looked like it they had like a rectangular area that was kind of shaped like you like jack was mentioning and then they had that other area where they had like you know small time publishers and i guess um artists that weren't so well known so so right like jack was saying it's kind of like a u-shaped another thing is is like the main artist alley was like you say kind of towards the the back if you were to go straight back but then you also had vendors or publishers that had some guest artists so they were kind of sprinkled out at those tables as well not just straight in artist alley um i don't have a problem with that kudos this kudos to those planning it because they do a stellar job and we're probably nitpicking here but just little things like okay i remember going oh clayton crane he's at frankie's comics booth and then it's like okay going through the whole okay there it is that's the booth um, but usually you know especially having gone there it's kind of set up the same way every year rs alley is in the back and then also there's some talent spread out throughout the vendors and then there's some um i don't want to say bigger talent but well more well-known people kind of up towards the front on the sides as well. That might be by who's sponsoring them, who's promoting them, however you may put it. But one thing I also wanted to bring up that we haven't really talked about is they have a whole section at Baltimore Comic-Con just for kids. So if you have kids and you're worried about, hey, I can't take them to this con, I mean, they have a whole thing and they do events throughout the whole weekend of drawing superheroes or doing costume. I mean, that's, and it's segmented off. I mean, it's in the middle of the convention floor, but it's segmented off. You know, that's the kids section and they do all types of activities. So if you're thinking, Hey, should I take my kid or not? That's one thing to consider. And they do a great job of that as well. And they have real talent in there kind of drawing different drawings on how to draw stuff. But by all means, they do a stellar job with kids activities at the con as well. And then, of course, speaking of artists and the guests in attendance, what did you guys think of the level of talent that they actually had at Baltimore Comic Con? Were you happy? I mean, this year they had like Brian K. Vaughn, they had Jim Lee, and those are some, but then they also have, I mean, each year it seems like the artist list and the writer list is freaking ginormous. And then sometimes it's like, man, I really wanted to go see this guy, but I couldn't get to him. And another thing I've noticed there is some of these great artists, like I think Parker kind of hinted at it earlier, 
there's not a lot of lines at some of these tables, but I digress. Uh, what do you think about that, Andy? Oh man. Yeah, you're right. So they had a lot of amazing talent there. Um, Stranko, uh, um, Mike Zek, like literally, like one day I was walking around, I was like, man, I don't know what I'm going to do next. I don't have a lot of money. I bought my grail. And all of a sudden I stumble on that corner that Zek was in and there was no line And his prints, his amazing prints were only $10. Are you kidding me? Some of the best Punisher prints, Pinky's out. I'm a big Punisher fan. were were really affordable. And um, I think from the media standpoint um, there, I was, it was the media guests were kind of like, I thought the convention this big might have a few more. Um, and it seemed that that media area was very quiet. So I'm not sure um, how or what they were planning there. But a lot of the artists there were, I haven't seen a lot of big names like that before in person. That was amazing. Well, it's you, Parker. Yeah, so a couple of names that I saw, Mike Manley. Um, not too many people like him, but I like him because he was the one who did uh, – Dark Hawk on my nostalgia comic books that I collect. And also Frank Cho, but Frank Cho, I think he does pretty much every convention because I saw him out in LA too. And Jay Lee, I think is, he's another one that does it. But I was kind of surprised to see like, you know, those Asian um, art germ type-ish, like G. Hyun Lee, I think was there. Yeah, he was at Frankie's booth. Yeah, I was like, wow. they. I don't know if they're like, I thought they lived like, you know, out of state. I don't know if they flew them out here or whatever, but I was kind of surprised to see those artists. And also, like they were mentioning, <clears throat> BKB. And the line, I was surprised. It wasn't that long to get stuff signed by him. And Stramanko, some of the older older uh, artists were there too. I was like, wow. I think a person I might have liked to have seen, and I talk to this guy every time, every chance I get i think he knows me too is larry hama and yeah jack you probably like him too gi joe guy <laughs> yeah he's cool because uh one time yeah i every time i see him i usually have some kind of chit chat with him because i kind of discovered him through one of the cons i had no idea he had that kind of a history he was actually in the military he was actually an actor and he did all this stuff so it was cool to discover stuff about you know artists and writers what about you, Jack? Well, for me, like you mentioned, I go to a lot of conventions. And when you there's a certain kind of caliber of artists who at this stage of their career, they're like they're making less off of actually producing work for the books as they are going to these conventions. So as cool as it is to see like Neil Adams and um, Jim Steranko, I've seen them several times. Mike Zek, uh, um, Larry Hama, who to me is a legend. Um, so what I get excited for is that like next crop of comic stars. I love meeting those guys early on. So like they had Tom King there, who's the man, but I got to meet Tom King like five years ago when he had nobody at his booth and he didn't even have a setup. Um, so this, at this convention, I really enjoyed Ben Goldsmith, who is um, kind of, you may not recognize the name, um, but his, his source point press book came out this week and is like a $12 back issue or you know selling on ebay right now um with like what's it called like beyond the dead sea um uh i got a chance to hang out with frank gogol um the writer of dead end kids which is like my one of my favorite indie books out right now um and he's a guy who uh you know i think is like an absolute future star and you know getting to meet him and talk to him and when those guys are at that stage of their career they're like super accessible Another guy is, uh, um, I'm probably going to pronounce this wrong, but like Levo uh, Ramondelli, who does uh, art for Transformers. Super talented artist. Um, one of the best Transformers-specific artists I've seen. Um, Ultra-realistic art. Um, and he's a guy who you don't see at every convention. Um, so those are the kind of like the, the people I get like the most excited to see um, because I think there's going to be a time when they're going to be in more demand. Um, and they're going to be the type who maybe have those longer lines. But right now, not only do you not have to wait in line to get a signature, but they're willing to talk to you for 10 or 15 minutes um, because they're at that stage in their career where they're really trying to kind of sell you on their work. And I enjoy kind of getting to do that. 
outside of comics, I got to see and meet Killer Cross. I'm a wrestling fan. And so that was really cool for me. Uh, Killer Cross uh, did his thing in Japan. Um, he just left Impact Wrestling. I think he's at the point in his career now where it's going to be WWE or AEW. He's a beastly looking dude uh, in person. And he was there with his uh, girlfriend, Scarlett Bordeaux, who just signed with WWE. So that was really cool. Right. And I agree with what you said. I think the level of talent that they always have there is amazing. I mean, there's so many great artists and writers, but I also want to kind of dial into what you're talking about, those younger creators, or even more so like the independent creators that are up and coming, especially with what we do with the YouTube channel and the content we create on the channel. It's always, it's like both parties sitting there talking to each other and just getting excited, talking about comic books, kind of, I don't want to say coming up the ranks together, but building those relationships so that you can establish it and then getting that content created further down the road. And then it just kind of feeds that hunger for your whole comic book hobby reading. To me, I always say it like the book, you're like, Oh man, that looks like an interesting book. It always means so much more when you're like, Hey, that looks like a cool book, but not only does it look like a cool book, but I talked to that creator. I talked to that artist. I talked to that writer. I talked to that publisher. We've been in, having conversations back and forth. So I'm getting it just to support that person as well. And there's no better chance or opportunity to make those relationships than at some place like Baltimore Comic Con. Speaking of Baltimore Comic Con, it seems like everyone kind of enjoyed themselves, but there's one thing that you like the most about Baltimore Comic Con. What would it be? Again, start with you, Andy. Oh boy, this is something I'm really passionate about because the the only other cons that I've been to had very, very, very long wait times to get into. And if there's something you want to do at a convention on the first day, it's you want to get in and you want to see where everything's at. You want to check everything out. Um, and Baltimore, my, this is truly my favorite thing about Baltimore was I was on the convention floor in less than 15 minutes from walking up to the door with my ticket. Now, granted, there was a lot of go this, go this way, go that way, go this way, go this way. But they had a lot of, um, those um, stands with signs on them pointing you in the right direction. If you've got this ticket, if you've got that, or if you need a ticket or you got a ticket, they helped you out there. Literally, I walked up and the, the guy in charge was like, oh, you're three-day pass? You go see this guy right now and you get your ticket. And I was down the escalator and on the floor in less than 15 minutes. And I am so incredibly happy for that because Baltimore Comic Con guys, are you watching? I drove 11 hours to go to Baltimore, and I was on that floor in under 15 minutes. I am coming back again because of that. Not many things, but that sold me. That sold me at the front door day one on the floor in under 15 minutes. I'm back next year. What about you, Parker? Yeah, so I got you beat. I flew 3,000 miles, so. <laughs> but I think and Your the arms are tired. To to... Yeah. <laughs> Showing your age, Brian. You're showing your <laughs> age. Okay. Anyways, so like if you're like, you know, bargaining and you're doing that dollar bin digging, I think that's a great place to go. Because uh, like I said, I already mentioned it. You get great prices compared to West Coast. You get prices that are way below eBay prices, which, you know, is awesome for me because I do most of my purchases through eBay. And I've been to like local LCSs. And their prices are kind of, yeah, not, not that great. So I picked these two books up and I, they were like a dollar each. Finally get one free or $2. I just, I looked them up on eBay to see how much, you know, people are selling this for 20 bucks. So, well, yeah, if you're looking to get some bargains, I think if you don't want to do the Hollywood thing, so you don't want to go to the big one, the DC, I mean, that's San Diego Comic Con, or you don't want to go to the Wonder Con because that one's a little bit Hollywood too. Um, the, and you're just, in, you're really into collecting comic books and you want to network with some of the artists, the people in the industry, like even the small presses. Because I saw some small presses that weren't even in LA Comic Con over there, which is amazing. I was like, wow, okay. So, and then you get to pick up some of their books that, you know, they own. Um, convention exclusives over there at their little booth. So if you're into comic books and you're not into all that showbiz stuff, then, you know, Baltimore might be the way to go. What about you, Jack? 
Yeah, for me, I think my favorite part of most conventions, but definitely at Baltimore Comic Con, is actually the publisher area. I think it's one of the most slept on areas of the convention for a couple different reasons. Um, first off, from a comic collector or speculator um, kind of um, perspective, Brian, you and I have talked on the channel. We've at, often made it um, kind of one of our mantras that the first place you should always look when you walk into a convention is the. Um, the publishers. Uh, several of these small press publishers had their New York Comic Con variants still in stock. Um, so, you know, I mentioned Frank Gogol and Dead End Kids. He's, Source Point Press had um, those Dead End Kids New York Comic Con variants in stock. But also, there were several uh, publishers doing like giveaways. Like, any I've mentioned this anytime you go to a Valiant booth, if you've got Valiant swag on you, you can score these gold variants, reminiscent of the old 90s variants um, that they put out. There are upstart uh, uh, publishers like Upshot uh, giving away preview editions. Um, Mad Cave giving away preview editions. Um, and then aside from the collecting aspect, we do content. Um, you know, we're trying to kind of like do our entrepreneurship thing within the industry. Getting to make contact with the publishers, uh, getting them to become familiar with us and what we do here on the channel, um, here on, on comicbookinvest.com, on simpletonscomics.com, and making them you know, aware of the kind of content that we produce and kind of the symbiotic relationship we can have with some of the publishers. It's absolutely invaluable, not just meeting the creators, but getting to meet like marketing directors, editors in chief and things like that. So that's kind of not for everybody, but it's what I truly, truly enjoy. I think if I look back at Baltimore Comic Con, I think I spent the majority of my time around the publishers, kind of more than any other uh, other place on the convention floor. Yeah, I'm the same. I'm the same way. I found myself. Um, for those that don't know, when you walk into the con and go to the left is where most of the publishers are. So I found myself over there. Um, with Jack as well, talking to publishers. And then of course, as I mentioned earlier, the Comic Core, other YouTube channel had their booth over there. So I was talking to a bunch of other uh, comic book YouTubers. But one thing I like about the con is there's always so much there. And it's not like it's not crowded, but it's not overcrowded. I have one of those, um, I won't say anxiety, but I get to the point where it's like too crowded. I don't enjoy myself as much. Friday's a great day to go because it's never that crowded. Saturday's, of course, is the bigger day. And, and it's, I'd say it's crowded, but it's not overburdened. You're not overburdened with the crowd. You can get through in and out of the aisles. You can dig for books that you want to dig through. You can talk to people you want to talk to. You might wait in line a little bit longer to talk to some of those artists, some of those creators. But it's still like a healthy balance of uh, crowd versus enjoyable space to do what you want to do. Um, like I said, this is my fifth year going. I always enjoy it. I don't. I see myself definitely coming back again next year. Another thing, speaking about the con in general, logistically speaking, it's in a great location. I mean, you're right off the interstate, so it's easy to get to. There's plenty of lodging around. I don't think they've ever run out of lodging. Plenty of places to park. Um, so it's easy to get in out of. Sunday it was raining, so make sure you track the weather because – if you're walking a couple blocks to the convention center, you want to be aware of that. But I always love Baltimore Comic Con. Plus, it's close to home for me. And like we mentioned before, if, if you like comics, it's nice to go to a convention, a comic book convention that has a lot of comic books. So we've compared Baltimore Comic Con to other comic cons that we've been to before. We've talked about whether we were on hunting for anything or looking for anything particularly. We talked about the artists. We talked about the guests. We talked about what we liked about the con. We've kind of given a lot of information i guess one big question is will you come back again next year we're gonna go different way around parker we're gonna start with you you're gonna come back next year yeah so uh obviously i'm not gonna go to baltimore exclusively i do other cons but this con is gonna be in my list of cons that i'm gonna go to i'm gonna have the west coast one possibly what i was thinking is doing New York Comic Con, Baltimore Comic Con, and yeah, the East Coast route, and then, you know, do the rest. I think yeah, New York and Baltimore. 
New York and Baltimore are usually back to back. It's just well, usually has been Baltimore was the week before and this year it was the week after. But Jack, you gonna come back again? I hope so, oh, right? Yeah, no doubt. This I think this is gonna be a yearly pilgrimage for me at this point. Uh, I think I pretty much go ahead and write this one on the schedule in pen. I think uh I loved everything about the convention from the convention itself to, you know, the events around the convention. And, and I also, I have an affinity for Baltimore as a city as well, but I agree uh, with Parker. I think I want to do New York comic-con. So I may make that entire week from that New York comic-con weekend to Baltimore comic-con weekend. That might be comics week, right? That might be a, a big one, but I definitely think uh, I'm in on that. Andy, you coming back? Well, if Jack's writing, uh, writing that in pen, for Baltimore, I'm writing that in Sharpie because I am not missing out on Baltimore ever again. I'm not. Gonna, I'm gonna fly because that's a long drive for me from Michigan. But I am definitely going again next year. It's in the books. The boss upstairs, she said yes. So we're doing it again next year. Right. I mean, it's an hour and a half drive for me because it's kind of like a yearly event. Not only for the Comic Con, it's like the event that I get to like meet all the friends that we're always talking to like you guys online we're all geographically in different locations it's kind of the time where we can all convene go to a great comic con and meet up and then just have a good time and visit with friends and i'm glad jack said he's gone because you know he's like partner in crime on simple man's comics youtube channel so we need to make sure we get as much content especially to make up for this year since things got a little bit disarrayed but i'm definitely going to be back all of us going to be back if you're watching this and you went to Baltimore Comic Con, comment down below. Let us know what your experience is. I don't think I've heard anyone ever say, man, Baltimore Comic Con stinks. Everyone I usually talk to, especially if you're a comic fan, this is one con that they really like, especially on the East Coast. Another one we hear about a lot is Jack's home, hometown con is Heroes Con. But that's for another time. Jack did show you that stack of books that he bought at Baltimore. I will tell you, that we will have a video on Superman's comics of those books that he got at Baltimore Comic Con. Separate piece of content, nice little haul video of the books that he picked up. So be on the lookout for that. Thanks everyone for joining me on this panel tonight. Andy Park Parker, AKA Cantankerous. Patreon members, also member Comic Man Andy's YouTube channel. Jack, we all know Jack. Jack's my, my counterpart on Superman's comics. So, again, thanks, everyone. Thank you guys for watching Baltimore Comic Con. Thank you guys for always putting on a wonderful convention. And we'll see you next year.